Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zenokiller, coming at you with uh, a little bit of a talk about the SimCity beta test that was last week. Unfortunately, it was NDA'd, so I didn't take any video of it. However, taking a quick look at YouTube, it looks like everybody and their uncle took video of it. So I'm going to talk about it, but I don't have any video, so now you're just going to watch some Leftover Planet Side 2 video I have, because I just have tons of this stuff. I love that game. Anyway, uh, I've been playing SimCity for ever. I was actually in like the mid 90s there was a whole bunch of sim games. I remember on my the first computer I ever had an Apple PowerBook maybe 150, you know, 40 megabyte hard drive. Thing was on a floppy disk. So I played Sim City, Sim Earth, there was like Sim Ant. You know, Maxis just went crazy with the sim games, but they've dropped off most of those. So they've really been doing iterations of Sim City for the past couple of years and this is the 6th iteration of SimCity. I think the last one they called was SimCity 4. I probably should have checked on that. Anyway, so we have SimCity, and there was the beta test. It's an EA game. It's on Origin, and there's been a lot of criticism of the game, which is fairly well balanced, so I'm going to try to give some positives, and then we can get into a little EA bashing later, but whatever. So, the first part of the game, you know, runs through the tutorial. You can find a couple videos of it. I'll actually link it in the description. And one thing I've noticed compared to the previous version of SimCity I've played, it's definitely been... I don't know if the word dumbed down quite describes it, but it's definitely... They've taken away a lot of the layers of complexity to make the game more accessible. So instead of going for, like, the hardcore, you know, I want to build a city from scratch and all of this jazz, it's definitely been... I guess I'd say simplified. You can say dumbed down if you want, but I would say simplified. So the first most important thing is that it's missing the terrain alterations. One of the things I like doing, I mean, if you want to build a big city, just lay out a grid pattern, call it New York City, and be done with it. This one, it's you've only got a small pre predetermined area, so you can't have giant cities. Uh, another thing is, opposed to the old SimCity, you had a giant world map that you could use, and you could build cities next to each other and interconnect them. This one, you're just stuck in one predetermined area. Again, this is only the beta. It might change for the final version, but if you have the beta a month before the final version, the beta test really is just a way to get buzz started about the game. And I would, I think that's a fair criticism to make. I mean, if it's just having a beta test not to try to improve the game, just to put buzz out there, then it's not really a beta test. It's more like a preview for the game. Because there are a lot of features in the game that say, oh, this isn't available in the beta, but it'll be available in the full version. So that's something I'm not too happy with. I enjoy beta testing. I beta test World of Warplanes, World of Tanks, dozens of other games, and the feedback is nice. And if companies take your feedback and make changes, as a customer, it gives me loyalty to say, hey, my input has made an improvement on the game. However, if your beta test is merely there just to drum up sales for the game, I'm not happy with that. So anyway, play the game. Another thing that bothered me is that the beta only lasted for an hour, and I understand that because of a game like that, if there's limitations on it, you don't want people to sort of hit the ceiling too quickly, but an hour in that game? I'm just barely getting started. That was another problem I had. But the game itself, it's fairly well designed, the user interface is very intuitive, uh, for some reason, the voice acting, they just speak gibberish words. And I guess I understand that as opposed to having record dialogue for all of the characters, but this is EA we're talking about. This is not some fly-by-night operation. Clearly, they could put in the budget to have people read, you know, a few hundred different pop-ups. It's just gibberish. It's like, or whatever it is. So that was one thing that annoyed. That's one thing that definitely broke the immersion from me. Like, if your city counter said, hey, we're out of power, and it popped up a box, and you clicked on it, and you said, Hey, Mayor, douchebag, we're out of power. But if it pops up with gibberish, it definitely breaks it for me. But aside from that, it's got all of the basic sim cities, you know, roads, streets, industrial, commercial, industrial, basically everything you've expected beforehand. All of the different layers are in there. And so, the way the cities work, at least on the demo map, again, it might change in the full version, is that you have one city, and then there are two cities to the side of you, and then there's a wonder in the middle that you can build. And these wonders are things like stadiums and so on and so forth. Or I, None of that was available in the beta test that I remember. I mean, you could see what you could build, 
but you couldn't actually build anything. Also, there were not cities on the other side. Because one of the things they're definitely stressing in this game is interdependence between the cities. Similar to real life, you know, you've got towns with a lot of steel production, you've got towns with a lot of industrial manufacturing. You remember two or three years ago, there was that flooding in Indonesia that destroyed 25% of the hard drive manufacturing of the entire world because they were all concentrated in one industrial park. So what you can do is you can specialize your city. You can be a gambling mecca, you can be an education mecca, you can be a refining mecca, you can be a manufacturing mecca, and then you can use this to play off the cities connected to you. So if you build sanitation services, you can sell your sanitation services. If you build too much power, you can sell your power and vice versa. Instead of putting up a power plant or water plant or a sanitation plant, you can then buy those from other cities. So that's that's pretty realistic if you look at sort of how municipalities in real life interact. We're a small town. We don't have enough for a fire station. We'll pay the next town to put up a couple extra trucks and have their people cover our town. So those kind of things are definitely similar to real life, but I just, the feeling of the game, it felt, it felt, I'm not sure exactly how to describe it, but it, it felt like there should have been more to it. And again, I only played the demo, I don't play the full version, but it just, it felt like there needed to be more. It feels like you'd hit the sort of max, it, it feels like you'd hit the max too quickly and you wouldn't be able to get the hours of, you know, slight refinements, increasing property taxes, roads, and things like that. But we'll see what happens for the first game. So to uh, sort of sum up my initial impressions, the game for a $60 release definitely feels like it's lacking a little bit, but again, the demo didn't have everything in it that the full game's going to have in it, but they're selling the limited edition for $59.99 and then $79.99 for the deluxe edition, which contains the Heroes and Villains set. French city set, German city set, and British city set. It doesn't seem worth it, in my opinion. Plus, the major criticism, of course, is that use it origin, which everybody hates, because people just love to hate. And then it also has always-on digital rights management. And as everybody knows, always-on DRM is completely effective at preventing piracy, which is why Spore wasn't the most pirated game ever. <laughs> I know that's sarcastic, but that's the thing. Spore... <sighs> I'm going to go on a little bit of a piracy rant here before I finish off. There has never been a DRM that has been completely effective in stopping piracy, ever. It just doesn't exist. No DRM has been uncracked. There's not a game. I am sure this game is released, what, in March? I am sure two or three days before this game comes out, I will find a torrent of this game. It's just going to happen. And sure, you'll be missing a lot of the online features, but... If people cared about the online features, if the online features were decent enough, people would use it. But the same thing happens with Diablo 3. SimCity has always been pretty much of a single-player game. And I know they're trying to build in the online component about having your friends build city next to you and all of that jazz. But that's probably not going to be enough to keep the vast majority of people from pirating this game. And it's sort of one of the things that feed on itself. It's like, oh, people pirated our last game. We have to put more DRM in. But this more DRM leads to more people pirating. Like, if they had released this game without tying into Origin, and without the always-on DRM, without single-player, they'd probably reduce the amount of pirates. I, for sure, am not going to buy this game, and I'm definitely not going to pirate this game, because I didn't really feel the need to play it that much, but I'm sure this will be another huge pirated version of this game. Because I just... it just doesn't work. So, for my final thoughts on the demo I played, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. It does the genre, genre a good job. It has all of the key features of SimCity. It's a little dumbed down from SimCity 4, so if you're like me and you found SimCity 4 a little bit too challenging, this game should definitely be in your ballpark. It's got a lot of nice online features. It's integrated with Origin. If you have that, you can add your friends. You can play SimCity, building games with them, and compete, and all that jazz. So if you like this kind of game, it'll probably be in your ballpark, but I definitely would not buy it on release. I definitely wouldn't pay $80 for the Deluxe Edition. I'd give it a couple months see where it goes, see if the community builds, and then pick it up for 30 or 40 bucks when it goes on sale. Anyway, my name is Zenokilla, I appreciate you tuning in today, and I will see you next time.